Father, we give you thanks for as many who are signing in today in this lesson. I just welcome you, sweet Holy Spirit. Have your way in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the Holy Spirit flow in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We say, Lord, glorify your name that Jesus is faithful. Jesus is awesome. We welcome you, sweet Holy Spirit. Let great things happen around the world in Jesus' mighty name. We just say thank you for Pentecost week. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let the river flow. Raise our voice, begin to pray for the river of the Holy Spirit to flow in your life, to flow through your life, to flow in your church, to flow in your family. Raise our voice and pray. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ for the flow of the Holy Spirit. Let there be a mighty revival, a mighty flow. As we teach these teachings, Jesus, honor your name. Jesus, show your power. Jesus, manifest yourself. Be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is done today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Now, for those who will be watching us, for those who will be watching us later, this is World Mission, uh, Bishop Boni. So, search for my music, River Flow by Dr. Bonieta, anywhere in the world. You can search on Apple Music, Google Music, Amazon Music, there's a Spotify. That is River Flow by Dr. Bonieta, and download your phone. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, Lord. To God be the glory. Okay. What a mighty God we serve. These teachings are not only for you, they are for you and for your disciples and for people that you are that are following you. Okay. If you're a pastor, you are learning to teach. So you can also learn to, to know and learn to teach and answer questions. So I want to welcome all of you today in this special class. Now, we started last Saturday with discipleship. And I said, discipleship is the same thing like um, trainees, followers, or students, or learners. Okay. So disciples are sons and daughters of a spiritual leader with a divine mandate. You can also add this definition there, please. Disciples are also called followers. They are followers of a leader with a distinctive school of thought, anointing, or calling. So I said, disciple are followers of a leader with a distinctive school of thought, anointing, or calling. So not all the Christians make disciples. Okay. Not all the Christians make disciples. So you should have that in mind that discipleship is not only for Christians. There are even occultic groups of disciples, even social media. Some of the, the Hollywood stars have followers. You can call it fans, but fans, footballers have fans that are dying for them. Musicians have disciples. They plant hair like them. They dance like them. So all of this, everybody who is in a certain dimension of life with influence have disciples. Knowingly or unknowingly, they make disciples. Okay. So we saw it last week that even in the Old Testament, Isaiah, 8 verse 16 talks about bind of the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. Discipleship, that word disciple appear in the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament, but the, the teaching, the principle have been throughout all history. Okay, so we're dealing with the letter D for disciples. Okay, and you time to do revision, please. D, and we saw D stand for dependent. It is no more what I want. It's no more in my own power to decide. So a disciple is a learner. Now, like here in the US, if you, you apply for a new job, you must go for some training. And the trainee will take you through, it might take a week or more. You don't go there to argue, you go to learn. Okay, if you have a PhD, you go there, you go there to, this is how it is done here, and you learn for those weeks, you, you are being disciples, you are being trained on the job training. And we saw last week, Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles 7 by 16, we saw First Samuel 11, First Samuel 10, 11 to 12, we saw Ephesians 4, 11 to 14 for last week, 
We also saw Matthew 18, verse 2 to 4. I'm just trying to do the vision, okay? And then um, we ended till so today. Let's begin today with Matthew 16. Matthew 16, 24 to 27. Now, we are dealing with something very important. You cannot become excellent in your gifting without discipleship or without discipline. All of us have spiritual gifts. But let me just say that if uh, Miss Latisha decides to become my disciple and watch me closely, work with me, listen to me, listen to my advice, in the next six months, she will start preaching. Maybe when you listen to her, you, you listen to Bishop Bonnie preaching. When you listen to her, you will, you, will, you will see her way of ministry, you will see Bishop Bonnie in her because of discipleship. So the key to bring excellence in us is, is buried in discipline. So every person has spiritual gifts, but those who are discipled and disciplined, they excel in their area of gifting. That is why Jesus had disciples to put himself in them. Yeah. I said everybody has spiritual gifts, but those who are disciples and disciplined, they excel. So those who are not disciples, they are not disciplined, they cannot excel in the area of giftings. It's buried in them. Discipleship, like every eagle has wings. The eagles that can fly high have a parent that teaches them how to fly. All the, all the birds have wings. The birds that fly high are only eagle because the eagle is the only bird that mentors his, his, his eaglet or the kids to fly. Okay, that is why young eagles will be on the mother's back and they fly in the wave and will drop that little eaglet. That little eaglet will struggle in the storm where the eagle is watching and dive under and take it high again. And before a few, few weeks, that young eaglet has developed strength in the wings to fly high. <clears throat> okay, so today, please, let's do some serious work. Number one, so write this word, please. A disciple is a student, a student, a learner, a trainee. Okay. Now, as a disciple, the verse we want to read is Matthew 16, 24 to 27. Then Jesus, then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Let me just ask um, Miss Vera, I hope your audio is good today, Miss Vera. I do, Miss Vera. Your, your cap is, is making your face black, that cap your head covering your shadows. If you can take it, your, your hair going to be bright. Except your hair. We have beautiful hair. Why should you cover your hair? Hey. <laughs> okay. Just unmute yourself, Miss Vera, please. Unmute yourself, if you don't mind. Okay. The question is, Joseph, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. What do you think that, uh, the meaning, what do you think Joseph Christ meant? Yeah, actually, I see that he means that if someone wants to follow him, the person should be ready to drop down his own personal desires, his own personal ambitions, and then follow the instructions of the master. Now, this is Christianity, okay? That is, that is, that is one, Christianity 101. If anybody wants to follow me, deny yourself. It's serious, no, so. That is very, today in America, I said deny yourself and follow me. <laughs> okay. Can you imagine? But now that's that is the 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 discipline, that is the qualification. Deny yourself and and take up his cross and follow me. Underline the word deny and follow. So so in the school of discipleship, those two things are very important. So Mr. James, if you want to do excellent in your ministry, deny yourself and follow. Now, the earlier you do that, the earlier you begin to grow. 
because some people are not are not willing to deny themselves, so they, they stay with their self for twenty years, and they delay them they delay themselves because they are doing it by themselves. Okay, so you deny yourself and then follow. Now in verse twenty six, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. And what is man prohibited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his, soul, his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in his glory of his Father with his angels, and then shall he reward every man according to his works. Okay, so please, let's write this down, okay? I see uh, Pastor Esther, I see you guys joining today. Number one, as a student, as a learner, number one, you need to deny, you need to lay down your ideas. Write it, write it down, please. Lay down your own ideas and submit to the ideas of God. So, so I lay down my ideas, or I submit my own ideas to what? To the will of God. Now, this is very interesting also. Lay down, to say, lay down my own ideas Wow. So but in the school of discipleship, you come as a student, deny yourself, lay down your own ideas. Number two, lay down your own agenda. Lay down your own agenda. Yeah, you lay down our agenda to his agenda. Number three, lay down your own schedule. Lay down your own schedule. The English word. <clears throat> schedule. Oh, Miss, Miss, um, let me see. Lay down your own schedule. Let me see. I can shut everyone. Lay down your own schedule. That is schedule, also. Schedule. It's a schedule, also. How do you say it's a schedule? Uh, Miss, uh, no, it's schedule. I just didn't know what you were Schedule. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> okay. So, number four, am I right? Let down your comfort. Let down your comfort. Miss Ren, are you following me? I can't hear you. You have to commute yourself to talk if I need to hear you. Okay. So lay down your own ideas, lay down your own agenda, lay down your own schedule, lay down your own comfort, lay down your, uh, your own method. Lay down Brilliant your own idea. method. Brilliant idea. Lay down your own method. And uh, what again? Okay, lay down your own method, submit to, to his method. And I say, Lord, have your way, lay down your own method. So he said, Lord, have your way, okay? Lay down your own lifestyle and your own culture. Hey, lay down your own lifestyle, your own culture. You see, I went to visit in Africa I went to a village and I went to this very old woman. She's like maybe eight, like almost 90. And she says, oh my God, Bishop come to visit me today. You must eat my food. Oh my God. 90 years in a very dirty environment. She brought some fufu and some dirty soup. And she was happy that Bishop came to his house. He must eat his food. What should Bishop do? He said, no, I cannot. You know what I did? I said, Lord, give me grace. I had to just swallow that fufu I run out of the house. <laughs> oh, my God, it was dirty. But now, if I refuse her food, she will be crushed. She will be disappointed. It will be very bad. She trust me, she took it like an, like an angel coming, <clears throat> coming to her house that day. And it was like saving, you know. So she was doing all her best. 
and I had to lay down myself to eat her food and walk out. What will you do, Mr. 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 Leonard? Very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe ask for another thing, like granite, <laughs> like not, maybe. Oh my God. <laughs> no, you know, they don't have nuts in Africa. You can get your home to give you that village, you know. And there's no carry out. You know? <laughs> the guy said, there's no carry out. Okay. <laughs> she brought it. See, and the plate was dirty, cracked, you know, you know. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. I just have to swallow and pray and believe God and eat a beef. <laughs> oh my God. <clears throat> mm. Okay, so lay down your own will to his to the ultimate will of the master. Now, this is very serious, okay. Okay, it's very hot here, and uh, if I put the AC, it will make it some noise, and it will spoil our recording. Okay, sorry. So we talk about, um, now we lay down our own ideas, we lay down our agenda, we lay down our schedule, we lay down our comfort, we lay down our own method, they done our own lifestyle. Sorry, yes, please. Okay, and if it happened that you are not convinced to eat, <laughs> no, that con <clears throat> Sorry, it's not about convince. It's about ministry. As a missionary pastor, you visit somebody who is opening up for the gospel in a different culture. There are tribes that. If you visit them, they entertain you, we refuse their entertainment. It means you don't love them. You don't, you don't accept them. You despise them. You need to understand if you study ministry and culture. Like in my tribe, you visit a the house, they give you color. It's a sign of welcoming you, a sign of trust. So if you refuse a color, it means there is no trust. Do not listen to anything you're saying. There's, there's, no, there's no trust. I don't know about your tribe. If you see, like those in Western province, like Northwest, if you call her, call her not. It's a sign of friendship, a sign of, you know, you refuse it, no other thing can go. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, so so a woman like that opened up her heart to entertain you, you refuse her food, she'll be crushed, disappointed, and closed up. You lost, lost her. So, so missions have its own culture and things like that go with it. the price you pay for mission missions. Yeah, as a missionary, there are things you need to know the culture and the way people think. Okay, imagine me coming to your house from here, coming to uh, your house. You say, Bishop, we cook, we cook for you. Say, I'm sorry, I just, I'm not eating. Well, you, you will not be happy at all. <laughs> okay, you will not be happy at all. Okay, okay, let's go to a place. So now, so the question is, now that I'm a disciple, I'm no more doing things the way I want. I do things the way he wants. And that is when Christianity begins. That is when ministry begins. So Mr. James, are you there, Mr. James? You have your own ideas. You have your own method. You have your own learning. But now you come as under discipleship, say, I surrender my will. Now, just imagine... Um, Miss Vera, are you there, Miss Vera, today? Hello, Miss Vera. Yes, man of God, I'm there. So what do you do as job? Are you a teacher? What do you do for business? What do you do for, for life? I'm a teacher. Now imagine they just promoted you like Minister of Education for your country. And then your pastor says, we have, we have been praying, and the, the church council just decided to send you as, as a missionary to, to Niger. 
<laughs> you see, you just be appointed as a minister, minister, minister of education for your country by the government. And then your pastor tells you, I've been praying, and the Lord said we should send you as a missionary to another country. That is when now you need to die. Your own will, <laughs> your own ambition, your own method, your own plans come to an end. As a price of discipleship. You know, Jesus did not consult his disciples where they're going next, 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 next step. <laughs> okay, okay. They say, oh, check your schedule, Peter. What are you convenient for you for us to go to the next city? No. They were under training. They were followers. And, it, and it, maybe it, it could have used maybe different methods. But sometimes it trick on food for long distances. They were training. For me. It, it, they were being trained to face the world when Christ is not there. So, so, so for those who are disciples, like, like me, at the age of 16, I went to a church. I just went to get a mission in the University of Nigeria in, this, in one country. And then I went to a convention. The preacher says, there is, there's a young man here. Drop down your technology. Pick your Bible to Bible college. And the Lord said, you are the one. I refused for like six months. The Lord said, you are the one. Finally, I said, Lord, I surrender. Now, I did not accept the call happily. No, okay, okay. No, there was a price. I did not rejoice in the beginning. So, oh, thank God for calling me. No, no. Because in those days, pastors were the poorest people in the community. 1986, pastors were very wretched. Yeah, I mean, the whole, like in the whole of my province, like one pastor had a car. No, pastor didn't have anything. So when God called me, I had to say, it wasn't possible, it wasn't easy. You have to say yes, Lord, with tears. <clears throat> in the early 80s and 90s in Cameroon, when a pastor approached to marry a young girl, the girl would say, Lord, why me? Why do you choose me? <laughs> <laughs> Lord, among all the girls, why did you choose me? <laughs> oh, because you know you are going to a life of suffering. You will sent to one village somewhere. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so it's seen that to be a disciple, you must lay down your own, your own, your own, your own ideas, and submit to His will. Lay down your own agenda. Lay down your own schedule, your own comfort, your own method, your own lifestyle, your own will. Now, this is not easy, but that is the qualification to be a graduate in the school of Jesus. It begins with that. So, so anybody here willing to be a disciple? Are you still willing to be a disciple? <laughs> or you want to resign? Not yet, Dada. We will still be no resigning. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> now, but this is serious, okay, because um, there is no way to develop without discipleship. No way. The difference between hen and eagle. Who knows the difference between a hen and a, an eagle? You see, the, the hen has feathers like eagle. The difference is the, the hen does not mentor the children, the, the, the chicken to fly. While the eagle trains the, the, the eaglets to fly. They all have wings. The eagle will take the young ones, fly in the air, while chicken will leave the other one on the floor, eating on the floor. So for you to be eagle pastors, eagle ministers, you need some discipline, discipleship. Teach you how to pray, how to fast, how to preach, how to resist the flesh, how to grow, how to minister, how to sacrifice, how to believe God for provision, how to stand by faith, you know, you know. So all of this in in Christianity matters a lot. Training is important in any field of life. 
Amen. Okay, let's continue, please. So today we have on the line, uh, please, if you are signing in, let me know, uh, let me see your name there. Uh, Miss Victorine, where are you? I can't see your face. Miss Victorine, uh, I see some Victorine also, am I right? Yeah, I see, Ray, okay, Ray Victoria, okay. Okay, I didn't know you have Victoria, I see. <laughs> Okay, so God bless all of you today. Okay, so please, so write this sentence, please. It does not depend on me any longer. Write it down, please. It does not depend on me any longer. So that is the price of becoming a disciple. It does not depend on me any longer. Hey, hey, young, own, own, sorry, please. Not in show. It does not depend on me any longer. Now imagine, okay, let me give a testimony. I went to, I went to Bible school in 1986, 88, I graduated, and there's a noise somewhere. Somebody's. Okay. So <clears throat> I did very well at Bible college because I was choosing to preach on my own graduation day. Among all the students, and this is a huge, huge occasion in Cameroon with thousands of people coming there from different countries. So I was thinking that I'm going to send to one of the cities in, I didn't know that a chief of a village, the chief of a certain village called Kurume, went to a town called Kumba and gave his life to Christ. I went back to his village. And the mission was thinking of who can go to the village and pastor the chief. I imagine. So when I finished preaching, they gave me my own <clears throat> appointment letter. And I opened the, I look, you are posted to Kurume. I asked my friends, where is, where is Kurume? They, nobody knew where Kurume is. I went to Cameroon map. I looked the whole map. I could not see the word Kurume. Can you imagine? <laughs> I could not see the word Kurume. So I asked somebody, said, oh, it's a little village. That village was five zinc houses, 40 mud houses. Five zinc houses, 40 bad houses. There is no, 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 no pipe water. There is no electricity. There is, there is no shop in the whole village. I mean, you cannot buy a sardine bread. There is no boutique, no shop in the whole village. Now, I had no choice. I could, I can, I can only say, I, I, I changed. I cannot go there. I had, I had a choice to refuse or to accept. No, they didn't ask me, will you like to be sent to Kurume? <laughs> Nobody. The mission just sent a secular letter. You are transferred to this place. You know, and I packed my things. I went there. Nobody came to receive me because they were not, they were not Christians. I have only one member of my church, the chief of the village. So when I packed my things in the house and I went there to introduce myself, that chief, I have come. So the chief took me to the classroom, so we meet here every Sunday, you know. And that was a very challenging month I spent in that village. But God helped me to spend time there to pray and develop myself. So for those who are really serious about ministry, it will go beyond your own will, your desire, your methods, your thinking. We, the key word for discipleship is surrender. I surrender, Lord. I surrender, yes, Lord, all to thee. So that's the key word for ministry is surrender, surrender, and surrender. Okay, now let's see some things. Okay. Um, so we're dealing with the word dependent. So Christ did not call us unto independence. Christ gave us freedom, but not independence. Yeah. John 15, verse 13 and 14, please, Miss Latisha, help us, please. <clears throat> and Miss Vera, 1 Samuel 30, verse 1 to 4, verse 7 and 8. 1 Samuel 30, verse 1 to 4 and 7 and 8. John 15, verse 13 and 14, Miss Latisha. You have to unmute yourself to read, please.
John 15, 13 and 14, Mr. Tisha, please. Okay, sorry, I was getting there. John 15, 13 and 14. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends if ye be if ye do whatsoever I command you. Now that verse, it looks simple, but it's a very difficult verse. It talks about greater love of no man than this that a man laid down his life. You know, if I say, um, I mean, even couples, okay, even couples to lay down your life for your spouse is not easy. But laying down your life for the sake of the ministry, for the sake of your calling, for the sake of the, 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 uh, the, the assignment. And ye are my friends, <clears throat> sorry, if you do whatsoever, I command you. Now, underline the word whatsoever. It's not a very good it doesn't sound well for Americans. Imagine me telling Miss Natisha, you are my daughter, if you do whatever I command you. Hmm, that is serious. Daughter will end there today. <laughs> that will be the last day. <laughs> but now, is, is applicable in ministry that you are a student in a class of Miss Natisha, and it says, take your pen, you take your pen. Write this sentence, you write. Assignment is page 105, section 10. Okay? So, so the students that doesn't follow your instruction in class, at the end of that session, will fail. The same thing with ministry. If you have a pastor said, next Sunday we have fasting, I then say, oh, I'm not fasting. We have all night prayers on Friday. I'm not coming for the all night prayers. Uh, we have conference prayers tomorrow. I don't have time. That person is not, is not there. So we need to become disciples that say, Lord, speak your servant, hear it. Just say after me, say, Lord, speak your servant, hear it. Lord, speak your servant, hear it. Now, this is the teachings that will bring the church into the end time preparing for the meal for, for Christ's coming. Christians becoming disciples and following the <clears throat> following the word of God, the teachings of God, mentoring them for holiness, for righteousness, for truthfulness, for integrity, preparing the church for the coming of the Lord. Many Christians today are living a life that they will not, they will not be raptured because there is no discipline in their Christian life. They will go through fire to be to be sanctified. There's no discipline in their work with God because there is a lack of discipleship. Even pastors, many are living a loose life. A loose life is today. I see my friend. Oh, I mean, I don't know why a pastor would like to show his 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 new cars. What 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 profit is that? Go well, to see me take a picture with a big Mercedes. And put on Facebook. What is that? What, is, what is, has that done? What, what has that to do? Is that a sign of my prosperity or success in ministry? So many young prophets, they 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 win members by showing their wealth, they're showing their big car, they're showing them in big hotels. And now, what are they looking for? Fame, acclamation. And they entice now the young, young people to become prophets to get money like them. And that is the ministry. And that's what is happening today. So we should advertise holiness, advertise righteousness, advertise, in, not advertising my big car, my big house, big hotel, and new shoes, new suits. Okay. But now, you see, that is how the world is going today because of wrong in spiritual influence. Okay, please, first Samuel 30, verse 1 to 4 and 7 to 8, Miss, Miss Vera, please. First Samuel 30, verse 1 to 4. First Samuel 30, 1 to 4. And it came to pass, when David and his that the Amalekites had invaded the south, and Ziggler 
and smithing Ziglag, and burned it with fire, and had taken the women captives that were there. Continue to verse 4 and then 7 and 8. Mm. They slew not any, either great or small. But Cadanis, behold, it was burnt with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Then David and the people that were with him. Okay. For then David and his people that were that were with him lifted up their voice and wept. Hmm. Continue seven to eight. I pray thee, bring me hither the effort. And Abiata brought hither the effort to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, not fail, recover all. Now, you know, captains don't do that. David was a, a warrior, a very intelligent warrior. What will they do if they come and see that there is war against your city? You say, hey, military captain, prepare your, your men. General, get the armory together. David did not do any of that. David went to, 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 to inquire from the Lord. You see, David went to inquire from the Lord. Now, it's important to see that. So, David went. Okay. There's noise somewhere. I think it should be from. It's better. So, David went to inquire from the Lord. Shall I pursue? Now, David could have said, Oh, Mr. Joab, military captain, gather all the military. We must kill, we must follow them up. So David put down his own military strategies. He put down his own military might. And he went back to God, Father, what is your will? Should I pursue them? So David is saying, whatever the Lord says, that will I do. And David sought the will of God in his life. So that is a place the true disciples need to become. You make up your mind not to do your own way, your own thinking, your own method, your own style, your own culture. But now we humble ourselves and say, Lord, speak. What are you saying? Teach me. What should I do? And um, so please write this step, this step in place, okay? A disciple is not, a disciple is not. A disciple is a sheep and not a shepherd. A disciple is a sheep and not a shepherd. A disciple depends on the shepherd. Okay. So, Miss Rain, are you there? A disciple is a sheep and not a shepherd. A disciple depends on the shepherd. So we, 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 we need to understand this principle <clears throat> because you, you begin as a dis <clears throat> you begin as a disciple and you can grow to become a shepherd. You begin as a disciple, you grow to become a shepherd. So, um, Miss Miss Ren, what 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 do I mean by that? Are you on me? I Miss Ren. Are you there, Miss Ren? I'm not sure. Yes, Daddy. Yes, Daddy. Increase the volume. Increase the volume. Hmm? Okay. I said, a disciple, you begin as a this as a a sheep. You grow to become a dis, uh, to become a shepherd. What do you mean by that? Yes, it's true, Daddy. Because when it's yeah. true, uh, uh, it's true, Papa. Because when you are a uh, disciple, you don't submit. You have to submit to be led by the Holy Spirit. You have to submit to follow the voice of God. 
et fait taire ses propres voix, fait taire ses propres pensées. Et laissez le Seigneur nous diriger. Oui. And after that, because you have been discipled, you can grow up to become also a shepherd one day. Because it, the, this sheep grow up, and because you have been a this, you have been a follower. Hello, Miss Blanche. Are you following me? Because you have been a follower, you can become a leader. You cannot. You can never become a leader, a good leader. If you have not been a good follower, that's a simple principle. Those who are good followers become good leaders. So if I refuse to be a follower, I want to become a leader. No, you become a big boss because you're not been you're not been following anybody. So you are now a leader. You now want to force me to follow you. So followers become good leaders. That's a simple truth. God bless you. So good followers become good leaders. Now the question is, who do you follow? That's the honest answer the question here. Who do you follow? You follow your disciple maker. You follow your disciple maker. Let me say, for example, okay. If I say I want to follow Jesus Christ today, I can only read the Bible and pray. And now I want to follow Miss Vera. I need to listen to Miss Vera. I need to find, ask Miss Vera questions. I need to see what is how he's doing things. I need to sit and listen to the teachings of Miss Vera. So Jesus asked the disciples to go and make disciples. I mean, ask the apostles, go and make disciples, teaching them. So the, it is the duty of the apostles to make disciples. You teach them how to pray, how to fast, how to preach, how to go on missions, how to be disciplined, you know, how to... So you must learn from somebody. Jesus Christ is the proprietor of the school. And they put a principal there called Mr. Leonard <laughs> to enforce the discipline. Are you following me, church? Amen. Okay. Okay, so that is why, now listen carefully. That is why Jesus makes his church and rest of elders or pastors in every church. In the New Testament church, we see pastors like elders. Every church had elders or pastor, the shepherd of every little church in the New in the Book of Acts. Paul said, ordain elders in every church. These elders were pastors. The pastors were discipleship maker. They were there to train, to teach, to guide, to, to motivate, to administrate the church. And the church now was able to listen to the teachings of their, their elder or their pastor to know Jesus Christ. So Paul said, follow me as I follow the Lord. As I receive from the Lord, I give to you. Okay, so let's go into um, one more aspect and then we can ask a few questions. Now, James chapter 4, verse 13 to 17. James 4, 13 to 17, please. Uh, Miss Gracilla, if you are there, can read for us. James 4, 13 to 17. James 4, 13 to 17. If you cannot see it, I'll read myself. Are you there? Yes, sir. James 4, 13 to 17. He said, go, go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow we go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what you shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanished away. For that he ought to say, if the Lord, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye redress in your boastings, all such redressing is evil. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and do it not, to him is a sin. So, so the goal there is to say, the Lord will. If the Lord will. 
not what I want. Now, that means I make my plans, I submit my plans to the will of God. I make my schedule, I submit my schedule to the will of God. I have my own ideas, I submit my ideas to the, Lord, the will of God. So I am under authority. So my will is not a final authority. His will is a final authority. So, so Jesus always said, as, as I hear, so I speak. I see what the Father is doing, I also do, do them also. So, so the first thing about discipleship with, with just any here now is um, discipleship is a dependent, a learner. Any question on that, who can change our, our change a thought? You have a question, please. Can unmute yourself and ask, ask your question. And then we'll go to the next the next letter. Ah. No question. Okay, let's start. I please. Ah. You know, by spelling the word discipleship, okay. So D is dependent, R is inward and mental development. Inward and mental development. <clears throat> the goal for discipleship is development. Write it down so well. The goal for discipleship is development. And imagine I went to London, I, I went to visit a school in London. I was so shocked with a system of, of training they were trying to propose to this to this school. That is, I said, inward and mental development. They were bringing a new system of, of education called natural development. That means allow your children to discover what is right and what is good by themselves. Don't tell a child this is wrong, this is right. The child needs to grow and discover what is good or bad to him or her. Now, what, what type of world will look like? If you cannot tell your child that this this child these type of videos are wrong, this film is so no allow the child the child to discover by himself what is right what is wrong. That is devilish. Okay. So the goal for this the goal for training is development. <clears throat> you know that every every one of us here can develop. For example, if Mr. Leonard, <clears throat> if you join me. I think I think it to buy my little airport behind my house in a few years. I can teach her to fly a jet plane. Just enter the jet plane. Six months, you're already a pilot. <laughs> but until you die, until you until you until Christ comes, if you don't go to the pilot school, you cannot fly a plane. <laughs> okay. But the skill is there in you, you can fly. Mm -hmm. But you need just training. Okay, let me just training. Okay, imagine maybe Miss Miss any question. Oh, yes, ask a question, please. Just a minute ever ask a question. I wish to find out uh, if you are in the course of doing discipleship and you have you have a Christian who really loves God, but is still manifesting some certain attributes which are contrary to the will of God. Now you try to advise, you show from scripture and pray for the person, yet you still see the manifestations of those attributes which are contrary to God's will. What must you do to, to help such a disciple? The person needs to be born again. Discipleship is not training somebody to become holy. Born again is what breaks the power of sin in a Christian's life. Born again true, sincere, born again, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We, we cannot make a Christian, we cannot produce a Christian, <laughs> okay? I can train a Christian on how to preach, how to pray, how to fast, how to understand. They cannot, they cannot develop a Christian, <laughs> okay? A Christian, to be a, a Christian is a supernatural work of grace that a person, a person is born again. Born again. So with that born again, that person will see be in the flesh. Born again to us, baptism of the Holy Spirit breaks the flesh. So you are trying to develop uh, somebody 
who to be to be to develop the fruit of the spirit with that spirit, it will not work. Okay, so the person you need to show the person real born again. <laughs> okay, okay. So if I say I'm a born again, I'm a Christian, yeah. but you know, you cannot be born again and still lying and still hating. You cannot forgive. You, know, you see, I'm born again. Is well, those are born again are very dangerous. I know my own born again. The day I was born again, I cried, I wept, I went home, I took out from my house everything that was not right. Everything. Out. I was born again. Not just, okay. So true born again brings conviction of sin. So don't disciple someone who is not born again. It will not, it will not work. The person must be born again and willing to submit to the word of God and it can help the person grow. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Just admit yourself, please. Okay. okay. So, no noise, please. Maybe shut. Okay. So, let's continue, please. Um, so, we're dealing with I, no, so I is inward and mental development. So, our goal in discipleship is to see development. Now, you really want to be better. If you really want to be better and greater in life, you need help to be propelled. Try the word propelled. You know, propelled is a, a, a mechanical word. Before they were electronics, they were propelled engine that were propelled. Okay. It's like a force that pushes you. So propelled, you need help to be to propel every potential in you to develop. So you need a push in your life to develop your potential and capacity and efficiency. Don't write that, right? Okay, propelled to develop what? Potential, capacity, and efficiency. So Ms. Vera, my goal to disciple you is to see you develop your potential, your capacity, and efficiency. So that is where discipleship comes in to develop these men and women, the potential in them, the, the, the capacity with them to develop an efficiency. So some Christians cannot do better. Imagine, okay, I went to Cameroon to a church. I know, I know this friend travels to US. When he go and enter his church in Africa, it was just be sad. The walls are dirty, background popping dirty, and then I was called to preach. Microphone, the head is rusted. It's like it had been used like for 10 years. You know, microphone, you can even untie it and wash it. They didn't know that. So all the sweat for every preacher for 10 years is on that microphone and it's rusted. Oh my God. What do I do? I have to take a chip that is placed on the microphone head, just try to manage to preach. Now, what is the problem? They have the Holy Spirit. They have the word of God. They have Jesus Christ. They, they don't have any, this, any mentor to disciple them to develop potential, capacity, and efficiency in excellence. So they're doing their own best in their own shell. In their own cocoon. Is it cocoon? But now, to, for them, so I just went there. I talked with the pastor a few, in a few hours. I raised money, money to change the carpet of the floor. And in a few years, that church changed. Because I started giving the pastor that environment matters. The audience, to get your audience, the environment matters. I started, I started to mentor the pastor a few things to do. And he got those things and applied them and changed his church. So, so Jesus called Peter. James and John and all these men, they were hardworking men. They had the strength. They had all the experience. The Christ said, you are now enrolling in a different school of thought. It's a different school of thought. I will make you disciples. I will make you Peter. So you are enrolled in a school that is a makeover. I, Miss Latisha, I will make you a prophet to the nations. Can you imagine? 
Yes. So Jesus said, come follow me. I want to make you a prophetess. Is that possible? Yes. It's possible. You see, it's possible. So, so, so without discipleship, our potential, our capacity and efficiency is not developed. We know that the development comes through push and teaching and practical. The practical part, okay, let me say Miss uh, Miss Blanche, okay? If you enroll in my school, in my church, you know what happens in my church every Sunday? No. One of my students will preach for 10 minutes before I preach every Sunday. If you watch my services, if I preach, they say 10 minutes exhortation by somebody, if you watch my live series. Somebody, I give my students a chance to preach for 10 minutes every Sunday before I preach. Why? I teach them to preach. I correct them after service. And if you do that for one year, two years, you can preach anywhere in the world on any subject. But some have not been mentored. Some are not been trained. So they're just, they're just trying by their own self-effort, self-ability, and they limit themselves. There is no push. So their, their potential, the gifting, the talent, the skill, the unction is not provoked to develop. So Christ provoked the gifts in the disciples to grow and develop. I will make you a, a voice to the nation. It takes a voice to raise up a voice. Write it down somewhere, okay? So Miss, Miss Blanche, a rule in my, in, my, in my class. It takes a voice to raise up a voice. Don't forget. It takes a voice to raise up. If I just say, Mr. Leonard, follow me. We are going to, you know, I took one of my friends to South Africa to preach in my conference, South Africa. I gave him three sessions. It's, it came back, his life changed. If I just take Mr. Leonard, we are going to Kenya, preach for one conference. We preach three sessions. The next three months, we're going to Cameroon, he preach. If you, if you watch, I can see evangelist Paul Funko. He's an apostle. I came to US, I think I met him a long time ago. I took him to Cameroon. I gave, I gave him the title evangelist. He preached at my conference. And then from there, first I invited him. He's now apostle. He's going to just for Paul Funko. He's preaching now in Philippines, different countries. He's going everywhere. There's somebody had to ignite that fire in him and push him to the, his level. Nothing will change until you, you connect to the voice that is supposed to raise you up. So, okay, so have the word there, potential, capacity, and, and efficiency. Now, what's the difference between capacity and efficiency, Mr. Leonard? Difference between capacity and efficiency. Yes, uh, the capacity is... Um... We can say it is uh, what you produce, yeah. and the efficiency is the essence. Is the uh, is the how can I say? It is the the power in it to be efficient to be. Uh, I don't know how to say it. Miss Blanche, help your husband. Help your husband, Miss Blanche. Okay, I can say. Uh... Je peux dire en français, pour être oui. plus... Mm -hmm. Donc, la capacité parle de ce que tu as, de, 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 de ton pouvoir. Mais okay. l'efficacité, c'est le résultat, en fait. C'est ce que tu produis. Parce wow. que tu peux avoir le pouvoir, mais sans pouvoir, n'est-ce pas, apporter du résultat. Donc, dans l'efficacité, on voit le résultat. Par exemple, un médicament peut avoir de la capacité de guérir. Mais... L'efficacité se, se mesure par le résultat. Combien de personnes ont été guéries après avoir pris le médicament? La qualité de la guérison. Oui. OK. So, you see that there are so many preachers, but the fruits are not manifesting. And there are people who can preach, but the efficiency is lacking. And as a result, the excellency is also lacking. Yeah. So you can pick any pastor in any remote village and change that pastor's life to international voice in six months. If the person is able to develop capacity, efficiency, 
and get new platforms and get new audience. Amen. Okay. So, so it's important. So that is my rule here is to see that all of us are disciples to become efficient. Because we, the capacity is in you already. You have the capacity inside you. And now we need to provoke it to become, to bear fruits. Amen. Okay, to begin our lesson, please, on efficiency, on um, uh, inward development, please. Let's start with Proverbs 2, Proverbs 23, verse 7. Proverbs 23, verse 7. Miss Rain, how are you doing today? I see your English teacher beside you. <laughs> Proverbs 23, verse 7. 23, verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, said he to, to thee, but his heart is not with thee. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So we see that discipleship deals with, as I said earlier, this inward and mental development. Nothing will change until something changes. The mindset must change. My mind must accept that I can handle this. I can do this. I can preach in any conference in the world. I can. I can fly. I can have money. Yes, I can preach to the five sermons in one week. <laughs> okay. You know, this, this, this year, as it early, last year and this year, I preach more messages than ever before. Was I'm preaching almost every day, Monday to Sunday, every day, Monday to Sunday. Okay, so so now let's break this down. Okay, number one, let me say, um, uh, Miss Miss Rain, are you there? You can unmute yourself. Yes. Yeah. Now, what is the effect of malnutrition? Yeah. What is the effect of malnutrition? Uh, oh, I don't know. Bon, quand tu n'es pas bien nourri, ton organisme ne fonctionne pas bien. Tu vas maigrir. Tu vas maigrir. What now? What what if I am a young pastor? And I am not feeding well. What happens to me? Bon, si un, si un, un jeune pasteur n'est pas bien nourri, non, il, il sera déconnecté, il ne sera pas. Il, il va s'égarer, quoi. Il va s'égarer. Il ne peut pas réussir. Parce oh, que pour mais... réussir, il faut qu'il soit en train d'être enseigné, il faut qu'il suive les messages, il faut qu'il soit dirigé, il faut qu'il soit. Oui, qu'il suive, qu'il ait un mentor. So, pas so, suivi, thank you very et much, Miss. So, Miss Vera, what about if I have, I have spiritual gifts that I'm suffering from malnutrition? What happens to me? That will also lead to spiritual pressure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Miss Latisha, are you there? Now imagine if a church is is if a church is suffering from malnutrition, how would the church look like? <clears throat> uh, physically, there might be numbers, but spiritually, there's no power, there's no progress, there's no growth. Um, you may see members dying out, as in like leaving the church. You could see where uh, you have members, whether they're pastoral members or just regular congregation members are living like worldly lifestyles. So they're fornicating or they're, you know, engaged in homosexuality or drinking or whatever. Okay, that is that is now the issue of the, of the same thing like mentorship and discipleship. <clears throat> so a man can be, <clears throat> a man can have spiritual gifts. Okay, you can have spiritual, you can have a calling, God call you truly, truly. Now, 
But now because of lack of discipleship and mentorship, we are stuck. If you study the book of Acts, we're going to see that maybe that'll be our next our next course, maybe. Um, you see the place of the right feeding, the right influence, the right information, the right voice, the right, the right motivation. And all of this have to do with the growth of our lives. <clears throat> Let me ask you one question. Are you following me? Give me one person that Apostle Paul raised up in ministry in the Bible. Who knows? Timothy. Give me one person that Apostle John raised up in ministry. Nobody knows. <laughs> okay. Hey. So so nobody knows. Why why? You see, you see, that is how now. So um you, you see, you see, these are things that we need to be very, very careful. Because Peter was doing general level. He was as an overseer, sometimes he go around to visit the churches and come back to, uh, actually finally Peter ran away from, from Jerusalem to Antioch sometime because of persecution. Peter, Peter ran from Jerusalem, James stayed in, in Jerusalem. So but now, but now, I follow you. You see that Paul, Paul was not just um, preaching. Paul ordained pastors, opened churches. How many churches did Apostle Peter open? Zero. Nobody knows. No one. How many people did Apostle, Paul, Apostle, Apostle Peter ordained in ministry? No name. But Paul put pastors in Ephesus, in Corinthian, in even Syria, even in Spain. He sent pastors in all of these places and, and ordained Timothy to go and ordain other, other elders in churches. So you can be anointed without the intelligence on how to raise up people. Hey, hey, are you following me? You can be anointed, but when you die, your ministry dies. Because there is a lack of discipleship and lack of raising up men. You can talk about something about Polycarp was a disciple of Peter, but that is after many years, you know. So, so we see that in the book of Acts, you see only uh, Peter was just in a few chapters go around, but Paul started preaching and going around teaching the churches and raising disciples. So that is how some people are gifted, but because of lack of discipleship, they die. And I don't want to be like that. So Miss Latisha, in the next one month, you're going to graduate from Bible College. Do, do, do you like to die after that? So now you need to be disciple on how to raise up more Latishas. You see, it's not just preaching the gospel, preach the gospel, preach the gospel. How far will how far will your gospel go? Depend on how many people you disciple. When Miss Blanche left Babu Sam, you know, I don't know, I don't know how many Miss Blanche you left behind. That caught your vision. For your passion, you are very organized. Your meetings are very organized. That called your vision, called your passion. And even though you are not there, you can see them walking in your footsteps. So sometimes we labor in a place, we leave the place, and we go back there, we always see regrets because we did not raise up anybody to catch our vision, our spirit, our culture, our way of life. So God sent me to America to start it. God said to me clearly, go and start a church in U.S. and from U.S. to the nations of the world. 
That's the vision God showed me. That's why we are here today. Amen. So, so this is the heart of the mission to raise up disciples and commission them with the same culture, the same spirit, the same vision, the same standard, the same hunger, the same enthusiasm to the nations of the world. Amen. Any question? Okay, so so let's consider, please. So um so a child that is not well fed will suffer suffer malnutrition. The same thing with an adult that is not well fed with information, with discipline, with the right culture, you will exist, but you'll find yourself limited. You may, you may limited, a lot of limitation. Now, let me say, let me come to Mr. Leonard. <clears throat> so Mr. Leonard, you know, you know there's, there's a preacher in you. Because there's an apostle in you. There's a prophet in you. That nothing will manifest until you are under the atmosphere and the discipline of an apostolic ministry that can push you to the fullness of your ministry. So that is our life is. So people are gifted but dormant until you are able to be challenged to believe in it and step into it and walk into it and flow into it. So that's why people like Miss Vera, Miss Vera is very good. She's one of my best students in, in Africa. And I believe in Miss Vera, but she's good. She's going to do great. So, but now the issue is it takes discipleship to be the place of you being fed and being disciplined and being provoked, grow. So how do this work? Okay, let's continue our journey, please. We're ending 30 minutes, okay? So you need to become, <clears throat> you need to be to be a true disciple in order to develop true devotion. You need to be a true disciple in order to truly develop true devotion. Let me the question, okay? You need to be, you need to be, a true disciple in order to truly develop true, true devotion. Okay. Can you see the sentence I wrote there? So you need to be a true disciple in order to truly develop true, that's T-H-R-O-U-G-H, true, true devotion. <clears throat> you need to be a true disciple in order to truly develop true, opa, true devotion. So, so to be a true disciple is important. Mm -hmm. That will help me to, to develop true what? True devotion. So it takes that devotion. That devotion is important. Imagine, okay, if I say every 5 a.m., Mr. Leonard, Miss Leonard, and me, we have to pray for two hours. You, you do that for one month. Will anything, will anything affect in your life? A lot. Absolutely. Okay. okay. That be, it takes devotion. To, to see that happen. Every five o'clock, your alarm ring, you connect on the phone, we pray for two hours. For one month, two months, three months, I tell you, something will happen in worldly and around you. But now, if you pray for one day, the next day, oh, I'm tired, and then you join the next week again. Now, it doesn't work that way in the school of growth. So we see that devotion is lacking to produce the excellence right somewhere it takes devotion to produce excellence and it's not teacher it takes devotion to produce excellence we must do it over and over and over and over and over again so please if you're around there just follow me get my music river flow but it's a bonita anywhere in the world now to produce a music like this it puts so many hours 
in the studio. <laughs> it put that thing, just put it, just want to go and sing. It put hours to produce just one song, man. It can take you one day. You will sing one line, the correct, you sing this, you sing, and then, oh, you are not, your voice, it must, and then to get to one, finish one song, it takes a lot of practice. Mm -hmm. Get a final thing that's recorded in the studio. Mm -hmm. The same thing with life. Those who are devoted produces excellence. So you must do it again and again and again. So a true disciple, you need to be a true disciple in order to truly develop true devotion. Amen. So you see the word devotion also. Devotion is something you are give, whole, wholly given to. Wholly given to. And you are disciplined in that area. Amen. Okay, to end to the place, let's write, write this one, okay. So let's see, um, we'll discuss on this maybe to next week. Number one, Develop your reasoning. That is that place. We can discuss all this more next week. Develop your, your reasoning. Number two, develop your perception. Number three, develop your spirit. Number four, develop your discernment. Number five, develop your sensitivity. Sensitivity. Sensitiv sensitivities. Sensitivities. Number six, develop your analyticality. 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 Anal analyticality. And then develop your mental capacity. Develop your sanctification. Okay. Let's just try this and we'll end today. So in discipleship, our goal is to see that you develop your reasoning. How thinkest thou, Miss Victor, Miss Rain? That means the way you process things in your mind will change. Mm -hmm. The way you process things must change. You know, some some see outward space, some see inward space. <laughs> okay, yeah. It depends on how you see the world. You can look out of your window. Some see trees. Some see sky. Some see nothing. So in discipleship, we think we teach you how to process your thoughts. Your thinking is very important, and Miss Vera. Your thinking is very important. You know, I teach my children how to think, how to develop faith. I will say, money, come to me now. The next day, there's a check in my mailbox. <laughs> okay. And they'll say, how do you do that? I say, okay. You need to be able to perceive it, believe it, and call it to existence. Mm. So, so how do you think? What do you think? Some see difficulties. Some see hardship. Some of us see opportunities everywhere. Mm. I don't have nothing to do with demons and devil. I see mm. angels everywhere around me. Mm -hmm. I see success everywhere around me. I see breakthrough everywhere. But some are fighting every day with demon. I was oppressed. I'm attacked. I'm going through a battle. It's your choice based on what you see. I, I, I like that, Miss Miss Blanche. <laughs> okay. So the question is, how do you how do you reason? Do you reason? Listen, okay. I went. I was sharing with a pastor friend that um. Now, it must sound funny, okay? So, Miss Vera, you can unmute yourself. Let's talk a little bit. What will you do different if you have money? Come again, sir. I did not get to tell it. What would you do different if you have money? There are many things that I will do different if I have money. Already, I have plans and projects that I'll lay down, that if the money comes in, I will step into it and start working it out. But two questions, what is keeping you from not having money? Well, I want to think there is planning. I have done the planning. And then there is also uh, time, the time factor. 
So with the planning, and then I begin to see how I can get into time to start working out the plan to get to, to arrive to where I, I intend to arrive. You know, I, I, I hear the word I like five times. So now it's just to work out the plan so that I can realize what I'm saying that I heard the word I many times. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you see, you know what I do? <laughs> Get a plan and give it to him. So, so take yourself out of trying to get money. See the project done. It's, so the issue is. Amen. I don't, I don't, I don't work with money. I work with finish, finished projects. Amen. I have a plan. I have to start building soon. And I draw the plan. I give him to sponsor. Draw the plan, and give him to sponsor. It's not I that that make the money happen. It is he that sponsors the project. So I take myself out of trying to get money for this, get money for this. I see the finished project. I step into it. I don't need money in the bank to start building. <laughs> I don't need a plan. <laughs> okay. I need a plan. The money is there. As I start laying the first block, that project will finish. But as long as I'm waiting for the money to come, it will not come. I will step into it by faith I said, okay, Jesus, I just obey your voice, take care. And the sun will start coming, cement will start coming, the house will be built. Because I took my, I take myself out of it. So the question, the issue is, today, tell yourself, I can do whatever I have to do. I can build anything that God says I should build. I don't have any limitation and begin the project. Okay, so so the reasoning must change. The way we reason must change. Number two, the perception must change. The perception deals more than just reasoning. It deals with the images you conceive in your heart about the situation. What are the pictures you are painting in your heart concerning your future, your destiny, your calling, your ministry, your project? What are those images you have in your heart? What image of the car are you, are you receiving? What image of the house are you receiving? What image of your platform are you receiving? What images are you creating about yourself in your mind? For me, I don't like ugly things. I like clean environment. I like to see a church clean. I like, I like success. I hate, I hate failure. Mr. Leda, you understand also? I hate failure with all my spirit <laughs> okay i hate failure i miss miss rain so you should hate hate failure hate failure amen so 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 because of that now so i paint the right pictures in my mind so in disciples she will teach you how to paint the right pictures in your heart you attract the pictures you conceive you attract the pictures you conceive. So paint the pictures you conceive. And then developing your spirit. Developing your spirit. Let me talk to Miss, Miss Latisha now, please. Are you there? Omid Hassan, Miss Latisha, Miss Blanche, Miss Vera. So Miss Gracila. Okay. So let's have Miss Latisha. Miss Latisha, are you there? Yes, sir. So if I said develop your spirit, what does that mean? That I need to be spending more time in prayer and uh, reading God's word, maybe some other books that are going to help strengthen other areas that I'm weak in. So what, what is your spirit referring to? Develop, if I said develop your spirit. That spirit refers to what? I would say like my... For lack of better terminology, my relationship with God. In, in relationship with God. Okay, let me start, start with Miss Vera. 
If you say your spirit, develop your spirit, what does that have to do with? That implies I have to be mindful with uh, the things that are led into my mind and into my heart. So to develop my spirit will have to imply that I need to get more of God's word into my heart. Because what will be in my spirit will be what will control my life. Okay, in another way, so, in another way is... So developing my spirit has to do with... Another way is that term, your spirit, refer to what? Your spirit, that refers to what? My, my inner man, okay. the inner being. Yes. What kind of spirit does she has? She she have. So the spirit, Miss Black, Miss Latish, Miss uh, Rosilla, that spirit referred to what? Your character, your attitude. So what kind of spirit is in you, sons of ba 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 Bonegas, sons of thunder? You know the spirit that is in you. That's what just said to. You. So that spirit, your spirit. Mm. Developing your spirit. I see that also. So your nature, your character, your attitude is important. What kind of spirit do you have? You can say lazy spirit, weak spirit, hardworking spirit, good spirit, gentle spirit. You can, all of those attributes of people. Some have bad spirit, they are stingy, you know, so you can say bad spirit, okay, <laughs> they are stingy. <laughs> So as a person, as a, a person, now, what our spirit did Peter get, Peter have, Peter had? It's a little What our spirit, what our spirit was in Peter? Uh, I think self, it was uh, self quick. Uh, it was what? Somebody who uh, act quick. Yes. Okay, so, so that was about that 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 temperament. So spirit is what the temperament of a person. Now, there are many people that are that are born again, anointed, but with wrong spirit. They will scatter your church. They are born again, they will scatter your life. They speak in tongues, but they have a wrong spirit. They argue, they shout, they don't listen to anybody. They are unteachable. They want just to be the only voice that has to be heard in the meeting. You have to really, you need wisdom to deal with them. But they are Christians. They have a wrong spirit. So people cannot listen to any advice. That bishop said, please, please, calm down. No, 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 bishop. No, no, this is too much. Not today. The spirit. So in discipleship, we work on you working on your spirit. Breaking those things, reculturing re, re yourself. If there's something like that. So we need we need to be we need to be serious, okay? We need to face fact that Bishop Bonnie and you, we are in a long journey to develop our spirit. Our spirit must become like Christ. It takes challenging you, it takes rebuking you. It takes iron to sharpen iron. It takes correcting men to break, to help their spirit man change. Now, so those, those now who are in the school of discipleship, you need to face the truth about your spirit. How is your spirit? You know, how is your spirit? Are you a giver? Are you, are you a receiver only? Are you too much talking? Are you jealous person? Are you lazy? Do you like to sleep alone? So, and then the next one is developing your discernment. Discernment is the ability to distinguish be between things and spirits. D distinguish spirit and spirit and things around you. Develop your sensitivity. Sensitivity deals with awareness. Daddy? Yes, please. Means about uh, the capacity, uh, the, the, the the capacity to de to develop your discernment. Yes. So, what are like the? How can we do in order to develop our discernment? 
That is why you need to you need to be in this discipleship class. The body of discernment, the first thing you need to do is to be able to get peace in your heart. Number two, deal with every prejudice. Deal with prejudice in your mind. Take away your prejudge, your prejudice. Prejudice means you've already made up your mind before. Okay, so so get peace of mind. Push away, push aside every prejudice from you. Number three, learn to listen to your inner man. Learn to listen. So ask the Holy, learn to listen to the inner man by the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Ghost will drop things in you. But because of prejudice, your, your, pre, your preconceived ideas will hinder you from descending rightly. But now that your heart is, is open, is clean, your inner man will start giving you indicators, indications rightly, because your inner man is not filled with prejudice. So, so you need peace in your heart, clear yourself from all prejudice, listen to the voice in your inner man, and then talk to the Holy Spirit. I'll preach on Sunday on communication with the Holy Spirit, this Sunday, so you can watch our service. Communicating with the Holy Spirit. I've, I've not heard that teaching anywhere in the world since I was born. So on Sunday, you'll get that message. So you need to communicate with the Holy Spirit, also communicate with your own human spirit. How do you communicate to your human spirit? You ask yourself questions. That's all. Yeah. You ask yourself questions. Can I trust this man? Why should I trust this man? Why should I? Should I go? You ask yourself questions. It's important. Okay, and then um, number one again, develop your analy analyticality. Analyticality. Analytic, analytic, analytic. Okay, that's better. That's then develop your sensitivities. Uh, Sorry, please. Develop your sensitivities. We did discernment, but we didn't do the sensitivities. Sensitivity is awareness. It is with awareness. Okay, you are you are sensitive to things around you. You are aware. You you have you have you have by the grace of God sensitivity god gives you are sensitive to things happening you can it's not just discernment but this deals with your environment people coming around you you are not deceived easily <clears throat> so be sensitive to things happening around you okay and then develop your analytic analy analytical mirror this one please um, this is anal anali Analyticity. 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 Okay. That's it. Analyticity. Analyticity. That is the capacity to analyze things. Anal analyticity. You are able to analyze. So if I see Miss Miss Vera, I see the way you dress. On Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, I can start getting some conclusions about you. Gradually, to to, say, to analyze who, who, how you think, and why you do things. Okay, you see a young girl jump out the street with a black eyeglass every day, with black hood. You can start analyzing the person by the by the way you see the person appear. But now, by the Holy Spirit. You are able to analyze people also, and 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 you know whether this person can be trustworthy, can be can be can be a friend or not. Don't 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 be blind. Analyze things. So take pictures with your eyes. Yeah, did you hear me, Miss Miss Vera? Take pictures with your eyes. I saw this yesterday. Uh, Miss Miss Rain, take pictures with your eyes. The things you see, don't just ignore them. Because you'll be, you be in trouble if you see something happening and you just, and then that person, you come to your life, you forget what they saw before, you're going to be a victim. 
So learn to analyze things. Put one plus one and judge and get wisdom. And then develop your capacity. And then your sanctification. Capacity deals with the scope and dimension in which you can perform or handle things. So this is what we, we tend to do in the result of discipleship to develop our Christians in their, uh, in their reasoning, their perception, their spirit, their discerning, their sensitivity, their analyticality and, and analyticity and their capacity and their sanctification. So we seek to develop Christians through discipleship and discipline. So that is why Jesus did not say, hey, come on to me, let me start, start to build a school, a church. Christ, I want to make you my disciple for three and they have three years. Yes, sir. Follow me. Follow me for three years. They go up the mountain, come down, go to the sea. They walk with him, sleep with him. They saw his life. They had his sermons and they knew him. He put himself in them. They went through sun and winter and summer and through hunger and fasting. And they produced men that were able to change the world. Twelve men changed the world. Deaf men, they were well trained. Well trained. So, what is the problem of the, of the church today with thousands and millions of Christians? Nothing happening because Christians are not disciples, they are just church members. So, I'm going to start this teaching in our, in our church by June. I don't want church members anymore, I want disciples. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Disciples who can stand, you are sure you have, if you have five men in your church, you know you are sure of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they have your church full on Sunday, the year sermon, as a sermon close, they go, oh, nothing, nothing at the end. Nothing. <laughs> so we need to get people that you are sure that they are listening. You know. Okay. <laughs> okay, please. The last verse today, we end here today. Okay. The last verse today, please. And that is Galatians chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. You have tried it. You've tried today. It's been a good one hour, almost two hours. Galatians 4, 18, 19, please. Read for us, uh, Miss, Lat Miss Latisha, please. Galatians 4, 18, 19. Hallelujah. Yes, Galatians please. 4, 18 and 19 says, be it. Oh, excuse me, but it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing, and not only when I am present with you. My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. Now, now can you see what, can you read for us, please, that verse? Um, did you finish this? Oh, Pastor Galatian. Okay, yeah. read verse, verse 19, please. My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. Now, just imagine, okay, what do you think Paul was saying in that verse 19? Mr. Leonard, what do you think Paul was saying in verse 19? Galatians 4.19. Ms. Vera, if you are there, you can read herself. What do you think Paul was saying in Galatians 4, verse 19? I think there he was he was trying to, to see that Christ actually be formed in them. That is, they should be discipled. My little children, of whom I have travailed in birth again until Christ be formed in you. How long did that, did, did that take? One day, two days, three days? I think it took Paul a long time to see this in this Galatian church for Christ to be formed in them. Now look behind me. Do you see all these trophies? All the cups behind me. Can you see? To win a cup, it doesn't take more. It takes work. 
<laughs> for, your, for, your, for your team to win a trophy, I know Mr. Tisha is in school. For your team to win a trophy, it takes work. It takes training. It takes exercise. It takes serious. You must, you must, you must put extra time to compete with other students. And finally, they are champions. So the same thing with Christianity. The Christians that are lazy, or the minister that is lazy, you cannot win the trophy. Paul said, I have labored, he used the word travel. The word travel is very serious in Greek. It's like a woman deli delivering a child also, a woman who is in delivery. But this travel is to see that Christ is formed in you. Christ is formed in you. I am I am in labor to see that Christ is formed in you. So this was serious, serious time. Paul was zealous for good for the church of Galatians to see that Christ is formed in them. It would take more than just being born again. Yeah, it takes discipleship. Now, to end here today, so let's let's begin as you as you have your children at home, as you spend time to raise them up, to disciple them, you know, to train them up. And you'll be glad to see that you impact their life. The same thing with Christianity. So Jesus did not disciple the crowd. No. Jesus preached to the crowd, discipled the followers, the apostles. So he discipled, Christ did not disciple everybody that came to hear him. Christ spent time to train 12 men. Okay. And these 12 men now were going to the world to manifest his glory and his power. So in this class, so see yourself willing to say god i want to go extra mile i want to grow my life i want to see well Amen. i want to hear well i want to pursue jesus christ i want to develop myself i want to be everything that christ wants me to be i wanted to challenge ourselves this week for this inward and mental development go to our lesson begin to see yourself in that area to develop your capacity those those areas of development begin to work on them. You want to ask me a question, connect with me on personally, inbox me, let's work on that because we need development. Amen. Everybody ask at least one question for the end. So Miss Blanche, do you have any question? Not for today, Daddy. We really appreciate the lesson. It was very, uh, it was full. It was really full. <coughs> So lay down, lay down your ideas, lay down your agenda, lay down your schedule, lay down your comfort, lay down your own method, lay down your lifestyle, your culture. Hey, so Miss, Miss, Miss uh, Latisha, so do I need to lay down my own culture to be a disciple? Yes, sir. Why? Why so? Why that? What's that important? Your culture can actually be a hindrance to you discipling. Um, the things that you know and understand in your culture may not necessarily be a part of someone else's culture, which can be a hindrance <coughs> to them. That's going to allow them to see Christ in you. Now, what happens if you, you, you go to Kenya to preach in a conference and breakfast is fufu corn and okra soup? I'm okay. <laughs> the okra soup. We might have some problems. <laughs> I tried it. I can't hold it down. So <laughs> you say, "Oh no, I want cereal." You say cereal. What is what does that mean? Cereal. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll eat the fufu corn. I'm I'm okay. With the <laughs> no, I just I can't. Whenever I eat okra soup, I can't keep it down. So that's that's my issue. <laughs> He said, no, I was not born this way. I cannot, you know. So discipleship to your train to face all weather, sea, land, air, sky. Oh my God. Raise up us, let's pray. Father, we give you thanks for today. We give you thanks for everybody in the line. 
Give you thanks for the teachings you have received. Be glorified. We welcome you, sweet Holy Spirit. Build us, Lord. Manifest your serving us. We welcome, oh God, that you in life to this discipleship training. We say, yes, Lord, open our hearts. Help us to change, walk in our spirit. Change our spirit, man, to become like Christ, Lord. Bless this day in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. For those watching me around the world, make sure, please. Amen. Music, River Flow, by Dr. Bonieta, and all channels, Spotify, Google Music, Apple Music, there's a, or, or give me a call, plus one, two, four, oh, four, six, seven, zero, five, nine, zero, to get your own CD. You are blessed again. Come to you again, Saturday, same time. You are blessed. Shalom. Yes.